put on a polka face. My name is Karen. I am a computer programmer for a lab diagnostics company. I'm hard of hearing in one ear and I'm profoundly deaf in the other. I grew up with hearing parents and I have one deaf brother. My husband John is profoundly deaf. He grew up in a hearing family. He works as a computer programmer at a major bank. He only spoke and did lip reading, so he was never exposed to sign language until he went to college. My daughter Gina is 15 years old. She's been profoundly deaf all her life. She uses sign language. She does not lip read or speak. She is the only deaf student in the whole high school. My daughter Linda is hard of hearing since birth. She wears hearing aids, mainly in school, and her primary mode of communication would be uh, speech and lip reading. Many times when I meet people for the first time and they find out that my family's deaf, they're like, oh my goodness, how does your family cope? And how do you survive in school and work and activities? They feel sorry for us sometimes, or they'll be so fascinated that we know sign language and that I try to show them or explain to them that we're just like them. We have a rule in our house that whenever I'm talking to my mom, usually I'll just talk, I won't sign, but if Gina or my dad come into the room, I have to start signing immediately because it's the same equivalent as in a hearing house where if a mother and a daughter are talking, if the sister or the father come in, they can hear what they're saying. And it's just out of respect for Gina and my dad. They are strictly getting that into the natural harder to die I don't feel proud of them. I do the all the way in, they are natural they I die, have to do one thing, they need to ride for everything, really. I don't feel good to them. Overall, we are pretty good people. This is Bucky, and he is six years old, a thoroughbred. I've known him since he was a baby. He always would buck, 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 and he still does it now. He's funny, he's stupid, he's smart. He's like a stupid smart. He has a personality that many other horses don't have. I started learning sign language and then Miss Naples helped us learn because she did some classes on Monday night. And then this year I have a class with Gia, so we talk all the time. And our teacher's like, all right, you guys need to be quiet and stop signing each other and you need to do your work and finish it. And of course me and Gia don't listen and we start signing again. It's a sidekick too. It's really a nice thing to have. It has internet, AIM, email, phone, text messaging, calendar, camera. It's really cool. My hearing friends say that deaf and hearing people use AIM the same amount. I use it to talk to friends and people across the country. I'm on 24-7 no matter what. One of the neatest things about this barn is that the girls never leave Gina out. They tell her everything that's going on, the gossip, and many times they forget she's deaf. They'll say, Gina, oh, she can't hear me, you know, and they go running after her to get her. She just like one of them and she feels very accepted by them. I love these girls, they're great. I'm really excited coming tonight to meet this family for the first time. I got an email saying that they have four children, uh, four years old and under, and one of them is deaf. I have a, a deaf daughter and a hard of hearing daughter, so I'm able to answer any questions they have. <laughs> now I hear the dog. <laughs> Good. Hi. Yeah, I'm Karen Dean Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Oh.
both my kids, uh, once they were born, I signed to them mm -hmm. because I have a deaf brother. Mm -hmm. And my husband is deaf. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was very important for my kid to be able to sign to both of them, mm -hmm. you know, with no problem. Right. And then um, Gina, my, de my deaf daughter, when we found out that she de did have some hearing loss, uh, we even made more emphasis on signing uh -huh. all the time. Uh -huh. And we vocalized too. You know, they, they recommend an hour a day of therapy above and beyond narrating everything I do throughout the day, sitting down for an hour a day, which frankly is near impossible for me. And especially right now with everything else on my plate. But I don't want her to have to work harder later just because I didn't have time now. And so I worry about that a lot. You're already doing so much for her. I mean, she's got hearing aids since she's three months old. She's going for speech. You've done a lot, I mean, at her age. So don't ever, ever feel guilty. And you, you know your daughter better than anybody, right? Do right. so you know what works for her and what doesn't work for her? Right. You know, and so don't let other people make you feel guilty at all. Some people think they deaf at the medical plan. And they go and see the doctor to speak. The medical problem to fix their area, area. Other people look at deafness as something that um, can have different options, or you can go and get different kinds of advice on how to help the child. There are so many different options out there that might be right or suitable for that child growing up whether it's um, using hearing aids, uh, use, using sign language, or only oral communication, which is, you know, lip reading and speech only. You need to look at the child, the individual child. Everybody's different. You know, not one method works for all. That's not, it doesn't work that way. I don't look at deafness as a medical thing. I mean, I'm healthy. I mean, I can think, I can read, I can, I can do anything. Except not here too well. I have ten fingers. Ten fingers. Ten fingers. Like if you're not confident enough and you're ashamed of it and you feel like people are looking at you all the time, then it makes other people seem like, make them think that it's a big deal that you wear hearing aids. But if you feel like, oh, whatever, it doesn't matter, then the other people will react according to that and they won't care either. In the beginning, I wasn't sure if she really could follow the beat, but she picked it up, and she really has become a very graceful, good dancer. I take four different classes, also with two solos, and I've been dancing now for seven consecutive years. She loves to dance. I hear her dance in the bathroom, in her room, you know, in the kitchen while I'm cooking. I can feel the floor, blah, 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 blah. So I know she really enjoys it. My dad, um, for my competitions and my dance recital, he always comes and watches. And most people think that's weird because, or unusual, because deaf people can't hear music. But my dad can actually feel the vibration because at competitions and recitals, the music is really loud. Well, we've danced with Linda last year, and she was just really, really good, and she'd be a good asset to the team, and so it's we easy asked to get her. along with. And since yeah. our when my friends come and spend the night, they like sleeping here rather than at their house because at night, if we have a sleepover, my parents are sleeping, so we can be as loud as we want. We don't have to worry about playing music softly or worry about laughing too loud. So they enjoy spending the night here because my parents can't hear them when they're sleeping and we're still awake. So it's fun. Working in Carlin. And I'm working in the food delivery. Of course, we have the whole world out there. Uh, people come in to pay their food. And I have an eye on her. Uh, that day, to put over the carpet, I remember that one. <laughs> I called her, I said, hello, 
and then later on that afternoon, in another building, to trip over a different carpet, I caught her again, to do it again. Uh, then we moved out the father. Yeah, well, we really got to know each other better at this party, Friday the 13th yeah. party. He thought maybe at first I was an interpreter, not really a deaf. And then we kind of introduced ourselves. And when we met at the party, in the back of my mind, I kind of had a feeling, I just knew I'm going to marry him someday. I just knew, I just had this feeling because we clicked. You know, we communicated, we had a great time. Yeah, for a you have to sit down. Yeah, the sixth sense sometime. Yeah. yeah. One of the main reasons why I decided to join the board is because as a parent of a deaf and hard of hearing child, I want to make sure that they have communication accessibility in school because they're both fully mainstreamed, but also make sure that other people in the community hearing or deaf, know that the agency is here to help. I know that it gives me an opportunity and a chance to help other people also. And I wasn't even given this chance until I came to visit and join the board. So it's an honor to be a part of it. Well, we're really happy to have you here on board. Yeah. I had been very nervous that night because I knew that the next day they were going to announce layoffs of my company. I heard that Thursday would be a reorg, reorganizing under different management. So, of course, a lot of things for you. <laughs> yeah. I was put into a or deaf school with deaf children. Uh, they go a long time. Maybe I was three, four years old. And all the way up, it goes all the way up to high school. But my mother decided that I to go to mainstream public school. Uh, went to a third grade, no troubling, no, no taking, just really the teaching, lip reading. No top, but took him day by day. My first year in college, I was put a sign into the room with a deaf person who's a signer, but does not even look at sign. So we spent very writing notes. Lurdy signs from home, writing notes from trying to tell him. It was a lurdy challenge for me, probably for him too. And I also lurdy to sign in class and what I was in college. It's like what I've done lurdy to sign. Gina really enjoys working with Elizabeth, the little girl that she teaches how to ride horses. And her mom explained to me that it's because Elizabeth doesn't have any deaf role models, so she's really enjoying the company of Gina. What is that part called? A bit. Where do we put it? In the mouth. All right. And what is that part for? It's for controlling the horse and to turn right or left. Right. As a hearing parent and never being exposed to anybody who was deaf before with Elizabeth, I guess you hear so many negative things and you worry and people had told us, oh, if she signs, she's going to be dependent on an interpreter the rest of her life. She's not going to be able to do anything. And then you come out and you meet families like the DeNaples and it's like, gosh, that's wonderful. You know, Elizabeth can do anything she wants to do. You know, I, I, told, I got laid off a week and a half ago. Well, see, I guess I responded to your email at work, and oh. I didn't know if you had gotten my email. We knew the layoffs were happening on September 6th. My team member had given me a list of people that she found out were already laid off, and some of them I knew, and I felt so bad. And then all of a sudden, my supervisor comes up to me, and she goes, okay, Karen, we have to go to the director's office. And People just gathered. They went back to their desk because they were shocked. And then I found out later on that they were just angry at how they did this. So nobody's job is safe. 
Usually with other riders, she's very difficult to handle. But with Elizabeth, she's very, very patient. She listens to Elizabeth. She feels the very little cues that Elizabeth gives her. She's really sensitive to Elizabeth and knows Elizabeth's special needs. Some flowers for me. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. She's very supportive, very. Yeah. When he was eight months old, he would go down the hall crawling and calling what I interpreted as mama. And I'd be behind him and I'd say, I'm right here, John, right behind you. He didn't stop at all. And if I would turn on the light, then he would stop and turn around. And so I started checking with the doctor and the doctor, of course, said I was an over-worried mother and said there wasn't anything wrong with his hearing. But I insisted and had him seen by an ear, nose, and throat doctor who confirmed that his deafness was permanent. And he said, you must educate this little boy so that he can live in this hearing world. At that time, I was apprehensive what he was going to be able to absorb and how he was going to face the world. But he was so enthusiastic about the lessons that, and he was developing lip reading and developing skills that I thought he is going to be able to succeed. I used to do a lot of do-it-yourself work around the house. And John was always there with me. And I can remember when he was just a young child and needed a tool, I'd reach for it before I even reached for it. He was there holding it, knew I, that's what I needed next. John here has been interested in gliders from the time he <laughs> was aware of them. He got his glider pilot rating before he got his automobile driver's license. 2000. 2000, okay. Yeah. Oh, the opening. Yeah. Yeah, but I go to be cover up. I don't want you got. I don't think you got two thousand. Not even two thousand. No, no, I don't know. Maybe fifteen. Maybe. Yeah. Supposedly, parents who have deaf children and are working with them before they start school think once they're in school. The worry's gone, but it's always there. It was a long time before I stopped giving him corrections. I don't very often now, but I, being a teacher is just built in, and I feel that I need him to be perfect. <laughs> I remember the day I got my private light, then he went to the toy pile. My mom would do the back seat, and my brother Fred would run in the rain that we took off. It was a family affair on his first yeah, passenger flight. So sometimes when it's really, really nice, I'll go with him to the glider port and he'll take me up flying. And it's really, oh, it's so nice. Cause he, he's such a good pilot, and we can just stay up there for hours. OK, I've got a letter to read. Did you 
I think he has done everything he wanted. Have you ever done anything, wanted to do something that you didn't get to do? Because of your hearing, not because of money or something else. But. Uh. If I look back, would you could I put me with tiny fun when I was growing up? If I was able to dine earlier, and I might be more of a leader to kind of world, I don't know. For deaf people. For deaf people, yeah. For deaf people. But I'm fine where I am now. I'm not going to turn back to class or anything. But I'm happy. He's second youngest, three older sisters and brothers, and they decided they wanted to go downtown by themselves. And who was the leader and took everybody on the bus and led them around? Johnny. Sometime after that, when he's maybe a little bit older, he remarked to my wife, I says, of our five children, this is the one we're not ever going to have to worry about. And it has turned out that way. I had two job interviews last week in two different fields. The computer job, that company was really, really nice. They were so kind of apologetic. They said they really, really liked me a lot. My personality would fit in with their corporate culture. And we got along really, really well. And they were so understanding about me being hard of hearing because they said, okay, if we hire you, what do we need to do to accommodate you, make your job easier, to help you hear. I was like, wow. But, um, but then, you know, when I found out that I, I would not get the job, they said it was, it was not because of me, but they were looking for somebody with a little more experience in Java, which I didn't have. So, so I'm still waiting for this other job, the Deaf Services Specialist position. They had asked me to be on the panel to talk with parents who have deaf children as well as deaf parents who have children. I don't know if many of you know that about 90% um, of deaf people have hearing parents. Also, deaf couples, 90% of deaf couples have hearing children. Sometimes my older daughter has a hard time communicating with me. She tries to talk to me because she thinks I can hear. I talk, but I tell her, no, mommy's hard of hearing. You can sign and talk to me at the same time. She says, but mommy, you can talk on the phone. So it seems hard to explain. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard for them to understand. Because she thinks you're more hearing than deaf. So why bother signing? They, their hands cannot keep up. They're thinking so fast, blah, 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 blah. like three of them. Then after that, then they go back to signing. Yeah. Same with my older daughter. With the deaf services position, they said that they may or may not repost the job online. So, of course, the next day, I got up in the morning, I went on the computer looking to see it. It was not posted. That was a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. All that week, nothing. So I thought, ooh, maybe. And then about a week, over a week later, I found out they reposted the job. Same description, everything. And I was, I was so disappointed.
Christmas is coming really soon, and so that kind of makes it difficult for me to get into the Christmas spirit because this year we really have to cut back. And my two kids, they understood, and they were so, so good, but inside, it really hurts. My first experience was with my son, Robbie. He was a baby, and I had suspicions there was something wrong with his hearing. Two different doctors told us not to worry about it. He was too young. The third doctor is the one that told us he was profoundly deaf. I would spend like half my weekend like with my hearing friends, and the other half, I would hang out with my deaf friends. I was like in both the hearing and the deaf world. It was easier for me to um, hang out with the deaf than with hearing people because, you know, uh, when you have like a group of hearing people talking, it's really hard to follow the conversation. When we moved from our apartment in Brooklyn to a house, she was outside playing with some other children. And one time I opened the door to call her and I called her name. The other children all looked at me and she didn't look at me. And then they poked her and told her, your mother is calling you. Then she turned around and I thought, oh no, don't tell me. So when she came into the house, I sat her down on the sofa next to me and I said, let's play a game. I'm going to whisper in your ear and you tell me what I said. So I sat down next to her and right away she said, no, no, mommy, not this ear, the other ear. And then I know, oh my God, she can't hear at all from that ear. Sign language is so visual, and you can just, just see what the conversation that's going on, and you feel the commonality, you know, you're like, oh yeah, we're going through the same thing, being deaf or hard of hearing. Um, you feel kind of connected, you know, and that's what deaf culture is, really. You know, you're growing up, you know, you have the same problems you go through life growing up. I was completely devastated. I didn't know anything at all about deafness. I didn't know how to start, what to do. We didn't know how they would grow up. How could they possibly go to college? How could they possibly get a job if they can't hear and they can't speak? So we took them to the New York League for the Heart of Hearing, and there at least they gave us pointers. But unfortunately, they believed in oralism at that time. And that's where I was having problems. They didn't want me to use any signs at all with him. After, oh, he must have been in his sixth or seventh year, they started it with total, total communication. And then they were bringing in sign language. Then they started teaching it at the school. And my husband and I enrolled. We wanted to learn the sign language. In the old days, there was a lot of deaf clubs then where, you know, in New York City, where I lived, maybe we had about five deaf clubs. Now, they're, they're, they're non-existent. Mm -hmm. At that time, you know, you didn't have the technology for communicating, like on the phone or whatever. You knew the deaf club was going to be open that night, and you know you would see your friends there. Everybody, they're there. Nowadays, there's no deaf clubs. There's no place to go. So, we have to change our ways of hanging out. You know, we have video phone. I would talk with my friends on TV. I feel bad for the young deaf people because they don't know where to go to socialize. They don't have a social life. It's harder nowadays than back then. And I have to say, my daughter is a fantastic mother. She has been great with them since they were born, that they never went through any time where they didn't understand what was going on, like my son went through with me. Before 9-11, you know, I didn't have a page of, of a sidekick. After that, I decided right away I was going to get it myself so that way I can contact people right away if anything happened. We were on our way down here to see my daughter, and I had gone to buy New York bagels, which is a treat for her and her family to bring down here. I used to drive down. And when I came back, uh, my wife was watching the TV and crying. And I said, what's the matter? She said, an airplane just banged into the World Trade Center. And I looked at the TV, and I saw the North Tower burning. 
and I, I could, just couldn't believe it. And my son was working in the North Tower and on the 74th floor, so I walked over to the TV and counted the floors down to where the aircraft had hit. And I told to look this aircraft hit on the 91st floor. He was on the 74th floor. It looks like maybe he should have been able to have gotten out. We sat and sat and sat, and we still hadn't heard anything. And to make it matters worse, he's deaf, of course. He didn't have the communication thing that he now carries. And finally, about an hour and a half later, oh, at least. Uh, a woman had called, a, 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 the wife of one of his co-workers had called and told us that he was all right, thank God. You know, I followed a policeman of where to get out, and we just followed his direction. Yeah, yeah, it took 40 minutes to come down the building. It was years ago. It's difficult to talk about it. I needed to see him to make sure he was all right. He went through so much that day. It felt good to see my brother. Yeah, yeah, good to see me too. My job search is over. I just got a new position as a professor at the university to teach uh, American Sign Language and deaf-related courses. What I'm hoping to do is, in one of the courses, American Sign Language, is to introduce my two children to my students to be able to answer any question they have. Do you plan to go to Gallaudet University? Or do you plan to go to college at all? I want to go to Gallaudet. Either Gallaudet or RIT, it depends. It depends. Mom and Dad always used to say, you're lucky, you have everything now. You're lucky you have the video phone. When I was growing up, I didn't even have a TTY. I had to communicate through my parents through the phone. That's not even good. Things like that, you know, again and again and again. And you know, it's kind of expected because TTYs were kind of a new thing from like 1980 or so. And you know, the sidekick is just five years ago, and video phone maybe two or three years ago, so I can understand what they went through. I know in 20 or 30 years, this is going to be extinct, so I'll probably go ahead with other new technology things. Who knows what's next? Do you think that Linda and Gina's kids will be deaf because of genetics? <laughs> the question. I don't know. Yeah. It also depends on who they marry, too. So let's say if, um, would well, you have a preference? Marrying, hearing, or deaf man? Don't oh. care. You both don't care? <laughs> Deafness isn't as serious as most people think it is. Like most people think it's like a major handicap and deaf people are lost without hearing. But when like my friends come to my house, they see, oh, it's not that big of a deal. I have two sisters and I know we fight a lot. Like when y'all are fighting, could I be able to look at you and tell you're fighting with each other? Like do you do your sign more like mm -hmm. profound? <laughs> <laughs> I yell. Like even though she can't hear me, I do it. <laughs> and I'm more like, like you said, like aggressive, like harsh with my signs when I'm mad at her. <laughs> and she gives me dirty looks. <laughs> Sometimes me and my dad go bike riding around the neighborhood and um, we look at different houses that are for sale. I'm looking into real estate. It's one of the things that I'm considering doing for a career. That's something fun me and my dad do together. Well, there's a lot of different ways that people are selling their houses. Like this person is leasing their house. Then that one had a real estate agent. Then the other one was selling it by owner. Yeah. So I don't like cookie cutter houses. I like unique, different style. Yeah. The older neighborhood. Both the other looking to me. Do the roof. Jingle the door and pack it up. Or making jingle. What a movie to you. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, next. We were living in New Jersey. She was really tiny, and she went to a couple of birthday parties where people have like little pony rides in the backyard. And ever since then, she just got hooked on horses. She's come a long way since she was five years old. And I remember calling you, because one of my neighbor's daughters was riding at your barn. I thought, well, let me go try to give you a call and see how you feel about working with a deaf child. And she rode our little pony, Spicy, yeah. who dumped her every time she rode. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. But Gina enjoyed being dumped, you know. Yes, she did. And yeah. she's persevered and been a wonderful rider. I'm very proud of her. I love Gina very much. <laughs> makes me cry. <laughs> yeah, well. She's a wonderful kid. She's just like one of my family. Gina's in first place. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I know. She doesn't know yet, and I'm, I want to surprise her. Where is she? Where is she? Is she back there still? Yeah, she's back there. Okay, let's go. Oh, she's behind that door. Tell her to come out. I got the score. <laughs> Life is like a card game. We are dealt many different hands. We experience good times and face challenges. Our family's been very lucky. For the most part, we go about every day doing regular, ordinary things. We just happen to be deaf. <laughs>